Hello friends, thank you for coming to watch another video. Tonight I want to talk to you about Google Cloud Platform. This is a platform that Google have really made friendly for developers, which I'm quite excited about. And what they actually do is, if you're not, if you're not a member with them, they give you a, like a $300 trial for the first year. And there are a lot of features that are quite competitive with the likes of Amazon in terms of pricing. So I decided to like jump in and move my website to host on here. There's a, a variety of options that we can deploy on there. Probably the simplest way, which I'm not going to talk about in this way, is just to use a static hosting that they, um, they have it totally for that. But what I'm going to talk about is how you can use the, um, the app engine, which is a sort of more powerful way to host your apps on there and it's sort of like all the one solution so they give you things like uh, at the box SSL certificates which is pretty cool so if you don't already know that my uh, website is actually a, a view application very simple application just a, a few routes and a few you know, passing data around but um, the deployment process would be the same for pretty much any any view website or react website so let me just take you through the process of how you actually you know, deploy on there and push to the app engine and um, just some settings you need to do to get to work correctly. So let me just take you over to... Um, so what you have to do is uh, you create a bucket on the, um, the bucket settings. So what I've done is I've created a bucket in there called Quantum JS Site. I'll just take you to the menu here. So I have two buckets here. So the one that you create is uh, a bucket, and then when you want to deploy your application, the um, app spot creates a, a bucket for you for where that thing is actually deployed in the end. So let me take you back to the, the view application which I have opened here. So here's my code for my website, uh, Quantum GS, and uh, source files, and then I've got this directory. So what we need to do is to push this folder up into our bucket to get it to work. And we also have to add a configuration file for the, the app engine. So that file is called app.yaml. YAML is just like a format for files, for settings, stuff like that. So this is, this is actually what caused me the most problems because um, I wasn't really sure how to set up these handles correctly, but eventually I figured it out with um, someone's help on Stack Overflow. So, because you know, the, in, in a view application or React application, you can use hash routing or you know history mode. History mode is when you have no hash in the different routes. So, for example, the home page would be quantumjs.com. Then, if I wanted to have a different route for like events, it'd be forward slash events. But if I was using the hash mode, it'd be like a hash forward slash events. I don't want to do that because it's bad for SEO, but um, you do need uh, some kind of server in order to have the nice routing and the URLs. Um, so that's why uh, that's why I decided to go with this app engine here. I'm sure you can do it with the, the static hosting buckets, um, but I haven't tried it. I just wanted to go down this route. So anyway, let me just take through these settings here. Um, though I was actually just looking at some, you know, tutorial, and they had it as Python as the the, you know, the backend server, but you could have it as Node. But here it just it worked fine with Python, so you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So basically, what we want to do is this is kind of scary, but let me just take you through what's going on here. Because we want routes to return index instead of trying to find um, a page running at say forward slash events. I want every you know forward slash events to go to the index. So that's basically a catch all here. And then this one is to then just to set tell set, tell the the engine here that any files that have this extension or this or this or this actually I should add one more into here because of my um ICOs isn't it? So anyway what this is saying is saying that anything that doesn't match one of these as the file extension, we want to um, be treated like this here to go to the index file. But if you don't, if you don't put these files in um, a JPEG, you're 
if you had a request to a JPEG file, it would then send you to the index page, which you don't want to do. That's why we have these ones here. So these ones, you just what you have to do is you just have to make sure that you have any files in your assets, PDFs, whatever. You want these to, to be caught by this one. And actually, I, I've actually missed one out here. So let me just dot. See, so I've got an ICO file, which I forgot about. And um, yeah, so let's just put that one in. ICO and manifest. I guess that's important for Vue.js. <laughs> I'm not a Vue.js expert by any means. I just like the framework. I'm sure there's a valid reason for this manifest file, but I guess we should put it in. If we should not put it in, then and if you know what you're doing with Vue, let me know. So anyway, locally, all we need is to have uh, run our build command. So in React, there's a build command. In Vue, there's a build command, which will give you production build in here. And then we've got our one extra file, which is our app YAML. So let me just recap what we have here. You have to go into the Google App Engine, and you have to create a project, which is the one thing we'll do. And then in the project, you navigate to the, the buckets storage stuff. And then what you do is you can actually upload the files. So you can upload a file or a folder. So that's kind of neat. And that only works in Chrome, by the way. Of course, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> and, then, and then I just want to upload this new app.yaml file that I've, I've modified. So this one. And it'll ask me if I want to overwrite it. So replace existing object. I want to, this is, <laughs> this process of manual uploading is, uh, it's not that efficient. Uh, but there is probably a CLI, CLI tool that I can use to automate this, but I haven't learned how to do that yet. If you want me to make a video on when I do figure out how to do that, then please let me know in the comments below. Oh, and yeah, please, please leave likes because likes really tell me what you guys enjoy for this channel. So if you want me to do more of certain videos, the likes are very important for me. Thanks very much for that. So anyway, let's just upload this one here. Okay, that was done pretty quick. Now then, what we need to do now, now is actually open up a console and we're going to synchronize our what we have in here with the actual bucket that is used to run the, product, the app on Google's infrastructure online. Don't ask you why they do that, it's just the way it is. So anyway, what you do is you go up here and you get this um, activate Google Cloud Shell. And it's pretty cool, it's like a little console that opens up in the browser. Google have done a pretty cool job with that. Normally, with my experience of using Amazon, AWS, you have to enjoy, install these like CLI tools and you sort of do a lot of stuff on your local terminal. Um, you may, there may be something like this in AWS, but I haven't used it. If it does exist. So anyway, this is um, this is the strange ID that they gave me, and uh, when I was first creating this project, they give you an ID. You can you can sort of tweak it when you set it up. But once you once you create it, this can't be changed. But since I'm the only person using this website um, or deploying it, I don't really care about this name. Fluid Griffin two one 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 oh nine at your service. So anyway. Let me just do um, ls here. So there's a readme here, and then the test app is where, which is where I want to deploy uh, deploy the files. So let's just go. Um, what we need to do is we we want to do a sync here. So these these files here are not currently inside this test app. This is a different um, storage bucket from this one here where we upload to. So what we what we're going to do is um, well, there's there's we have to these change these like going up directly is going out. If you're working with a lot of this stuff manually, then this is just some commands that I've sort of <laughs> made easier for myself. What we want to do here is we just want to run. Let me just double check. We've got a GS this thing here. GSUtil, so it's a command line tool that syncs recursively the stuff that's in this bucket, Quantum GS site, with our actual folder here that is going to be used live for from our website. So I'm just going to run that. 
is really quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to CD into this test app here. Right, and then we're going to run this um, deploy command, which will do all the heavy list, list, all the heavy listing, lifting, and set up all the CDNs and all the crazy stuff that it does, and then also do the you know secure certificates. It's pretty useful. So I have this command. So this is what it is Google Cloud App Deploy. Let's press enter here. This does take a few minutes. Then it comes up and says services to deploy, um, descriptor, YAML file, source in here, target project, fluid griffin, target services default, and then now this is a URL that you can use if you um, haven't. This will still run the same as actually my, my domain here, and you can see this is the same app. So um, let's just copy this URL and I'll just show you that that is what's actually going on here. Gonna have to copy this. Uh, this one. So this here is actually the same URL as the, the domain. There is uh, another uh, settings where I, I've actually pointed my domain Quantum GS to here, um, but that, that's not really too relevant to this particular tutorial. But if you you know Google it, how to point your domain to uh, Google Cloud Platform. You know, I, I actually use GoDaddy. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy this here, like this, and it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff. Automatically. This is, this is just real time, so you get an idea. And hopefully I haven't wrote my website, because that would not be cool. So let's just go to my website, make sure everything's running fine. There we go. Let's go in the, go the root URL. Let's look at the training page. Let's check to see this one's still working. So there we go, we've got a Client side, side routing page with view deployed to Google Cloud Platform. Now, the process for React is pretty much identical. You just upload this folder, upload to your app YAML, and um, it should should work pretty much. You know. Also, one thing you probably may want to notice is that the, the we're using history mode here. We can still use the the old fashioned way like this if we want. But it just looks ugly and it's bad for SEO. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. Again, please leave a like and uh, yeah, have a, if you want to try Google Cloud Platform, it's pretty pretty interesting. And um, yeah, so thanks very much. See you next time. Bye.